we wanted to create an authority known as the National Disaster Management Authority. They are going to look into in terms of the time required for the response of the disaster. So every country in this world is now trying to plan up for a national disaster relief plan altogether. Good morning and welcome to the third session of Unit 4 in Disaster Management. And here we are going to speak about the Disaster Management Act and Policy. Now, moving forward, this policy or the act that was created started in the year 2005. And this is a very, very important policy that was created under the Government of India Act because they wanted to bring in a very, very effective measure through which disaster management could be controlled. Now, the first thing here is that the short title extent and commencement. Let's first understand what is this policy all about. This act may be called as the Disaster Management Act of 2005. So in the year 2005, we came up with the entire act altogether. It extends to the whole of India. So across India, including Jammu Kashmir, including every single state as far as possible, the entire Disaster Management Act comes into picture. It shall come into force on date as one of the central government by the notification of the official gazette and on different types and names altogether which has been provided. So in the year 2005, government of India decided that they want to come up with a national policy that is going to actually take into effect the disaster management and its act altogether. So that is why we came into this act, we came into this policy altogether where we wanted to tell people how we could go forward and bring in effective measures in terms of controlling the disaster. Now with the effect of this, the first thing is that we wanted to create a National Disaster Management Authority. So with the effect of such date as for the Central Government Act, the notification that happened in the official gazette, we wanted to create an authority known as the National Disaster Management Authority. The National Authority shall consist of chairperson and number of members not exceeding nine as prescribed by the central government. So what we finally decided is that we will have only nine members totally in terms of the National Management Disaster Act with one person acting as the chairman and this management authority will go forward and take into consideration all the factors that are needed to control and to revive life after the disaster effort. So this management of this committee was purposefully created in order to understand the effects of a national disaster and how we need to control it and how we need to take forward the relief measures. Now, moving forward, the powers and function of the national authority. Now, if you just look here, you will be able to understand what are all the powers that have been laid down. The first thing is, subject to the provision of the act, the national authority shall have the responsibility of laying down the policies, plans and guidelines of disaster management, including the timely and effective response to the disaster. So the first thing is that this committee is going to be given the responsibility in terms of laying down the policies, the plans, what are all required in terms of managing the disaster. Now normally what happens is that moment you try to bring in a general policy or you try to bring in a factor which might not be in tandem to the disaster management altogether, then there might be a confusion. So that is why we created a separate team which is going to manage the entire national disaster team altogether. So the policies are going to be core focused. They are going to look into in terms of the time required for the response of the disaster. Now what is going to happen here is that over a period of time, you are going to understand whatever policy, whatever plan, whatever ideology that is going to be launched across, all those factors are being kept in position to the disaster management, followed by 
without the generality of the provisions contained in the section, the national authority may lay down policies of disaster management. They will approve the national plan, approve the plans prepared by the ministries, the Department of Government of India in accordance to the national plan. So apart from any other ministries, apart from any other departments altogether, the national management authority on disaster factors, they would be taking their own calls in terms of understanding how we need to go forward, what are all the plans, what are all the policies that has to be laid down and this would be in accordance to the state government as well as the central government who is going to come in action in terms of understanding these national policies. Followed by, we are also going to lay down the guidelines by different ministries and departments altogether. So this is very, very important. Why? Because when you talk about the factor of different ministries and departments, Everybody who is a part, who is a citizen of this country has to join hands together. They have to understand this policy. They have to understand what are all the developments that has happened across the various sectors, various predominant factor so that they are able to understand, they are able to mitigate, they are able to bring a response for the plans going forward. Plus, coordinate the enforcement and implement of the policy and plan in terms of disaster management. So, whatever the implementation that is required in case of the disaster management, where all we need to implement new plans, where all we have to implement new ideas, new schemes and everything, we are going to bring in the enforcement in terms of implementation altogether. So, this is definitely going to be a very, very challenging plan or a challenging idea altogether. Moving forward, uh, we are also going to talk about the powers and functions of this committee. Now, when I talk about the powers and function, a national executive committee shall assist the national authority in charge of the functions and responsibilities in terms of laying out the plans altogether. So there has been a committee that has been exclusively formed, an executive committee that will help the national authority in terms of executing the plans, in terms of laying down all the activities that are necessary, that are mandatory in terms of getting it forward. Plus, we are also going to talk about without any kind of prejudice, which means to say that we are going to have a very, very neutral team, a very neutral policies in generality to the subsections that we have spoken about. The National Executive Committee may act as a coordinating body and a monitoring body. So without much of complications, without bringing into caste, creed and other kind of factors inside, this committee is going to act as a neutral body, which is going to take into consideration whatever challenges that has been told here and prepare the plan that is going to be approved by the national authority, followed by the coordination and monitoration of the implementation of national policy, which comes into picture, laying down the guidelines for preparing the disaster management by different ministries or departments of government of India has also come in terms of the state authority. So all these factors are going to be counted, are going to be matched in terms of understanding the entire business. So this is how we are going to understand that the National Executive Council, which is going to come into picture, they are going to take into account every single policy, every single act, and they are going to coordinate with every state department, national department, so that in case of emergency, in case of any challenges, they would be able to come forward and help us out. Followed by the national plan. So every country in this world is now trying to plan up for a national disaster relief plan altogether through which they will be able to go forward and save their country in times of emergency. So what is the national plan that we have is that we have drawn up a plan for disaster management after the all the effects that our country has seen and that is called as the national plan altogether. Now, the national plan shall be prepared by the National Executive Committee itself having in regards with the management authority, the expert bodies who are there, followed by the national plan shall also look into the measures to be taken for prevention of disasters or the mitigation 
of the FX measures to be taken in terms of integration of measures or measures that are being taken for preparedness, capacity building, all those factors, the roles and responsibilities of different ministries and departments, including the government and other factors. So what is going to happen here is that you will be able to see that the national policy, the national plan altogether is that they are trying to see, they are trying to understand the various factors, the various calamities that are going to come. They're going to pre-approve the measures that are going to be needed for the state as well as for the country to take a different measure, a different stand altogether. And every pre-approval for all these projects is going to come up from the National Executive Committee altogether. So the government does not have to bother about going back to the central government and saying that again we need funds or we need some team to work with us on the you know on a precautionary mode, whatever the roles, the responsibilities the action that needs to be taken is already wrapped up and already taken up under the national plan altogether. So this is going to be like a Bible that is going to stand forward, help the people in terms of guiding during a disaster. The national plan is a very, very important document. You can probably read about this document under the NDRF website that is a National Disaster Relief Force. Under that, you will be able to see the complete guidelines of how it has been planned and what are the different factors. With this, I come to the end of the session. I hope and believe that this session was highly interesting, useful and in terms of resource together. In the upcoming session, we would be talking about the various other relief factors and measures taken in terms of mitigation and preparedness for the national disaster relief. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today.